Today we should uh, finish, our goal is to finish chapter 26, uh, which is uh, we've been talking about capacitors, the definition of capacitors. We, uh, last time, we uh, building on the definition of capacitors, we uh, proved the equation for the capacitance of a parallel plate. Cylindrical capacitor, L over 2K, LN R2 over R1, then uh, capacitance of a spherical capacitor was R1, R2 over K, R2 minus R1. Then we talked about uh, the energy that a capacitor stores, one half uh, uh, Q squared over C, which is, and then we saw it has different forms, one half CV squared, and the other form is, uh, uh, if I put, uh, let's see, if I get rid of, the C, then it'll be 1 half QV. And then we saw that, depending on the situation, we use different forms. Then we also talked about dielectrics, and we saw that the capacitance of a dielectric we saw that the capacitance of a dielectric uh, increases by the factor of kappa, the dielectric constant of a um, uh, the material and therefore if the capacitance increases that increases the energy stored by the capacitor for a given voltage for a given voltage it increases the ability to store energy okay one other thing that we didn't mention is what's known as energy density it's a little u energy density and its units is uh, it's defined as energy divided by volume Okay, and its units would be joules per meter cubed. Joule per meter cubed. This one is trying to describe the concentration of the energy that a capacitor stores. Not necessarily the total energy that it stores, but how much concentrated it is. So it divides the energy by the volume, and you get, uh, let's see here, if we develop an equation for it, we say, um, the, you could take the energy stored by the capacitor, like uh, half Q squared over C, and divide that by volume. Now, where you're going to get confused with this is that the volume is going to look like the V, the voltage, right? So uh, let's write, uh, for now, let's just write volume as volume, so you won't confuse it with voltage. So. If I put here, the let's just say for the parallel plate, let's say I want to put the capacitance of a parallel plate. So one way of getting the energy density is by simply dividing the energy stored in the capacitor by the volume. The other way I can do is I could put the formula for the equation for the C that we got, and look what happens. We can, we can get the half. Q squared, and then what's the C equal to? The C is A is 0 over D. And then also we have the volume here, right? Well, what is the volume of a, of a parallel plate capacitor? Uh, it would be um, like that, right? A times D right, is the volume. So if I want to get the volume here, put the AD, and then uh, the D and the D cancel, and we have half Q squared, A squared, E0. So the, the energy density of a um, Parallel plate capacitor is coming out to be that. This is for parallel plate. Parallel plate. Okay. Now, further, I could use uh, this fact. I can use the fact that the electric field, the electric field for a parallel plate capacitor is uh, sigma over E0, right?
and we derived that from Gauss's law in chapter 24, right? So, um, and then a sigma is Q over A, right, E0. So the electric field is Q over A E0. So now look what will happen. I notice that this one, Q squared over A squared E0, looks like the electric field, right? Q over A E0, except this is square and this is square. So what I could do is a little mathematical trick. I could just say, take this and square it and put another extra one up there. You see? So what's going to happen now? Q squared, A squared, E0 squared is going to equal what? That's going to equal E squared. Okay? So the energy density of a parallel plate is equal to half, half of E0 times the electric field squared. So the reason why I went through that and derived that is because now I can find the energy density without having to use the total energy and the volume. You see, let's say for example, the problem asks me find the energy density without asking me find the total energy. So I wouldn't have to find the total energy and the volume. I can simply, if I already know the electric field, I can simply uh, calculate the uh, square the electric field and then multiply by half E. Now what if I go through the same procedure that I just did and I t find the energy density for a cylindrical capacitor? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. Okay. Or a cylindrical capacitor. So uh, if I go through the whole steps, and I'm not going to do it now, but if I go through the whole steps, like I go half Q squared divided by its capacitance, so I would put the capacitance of a cylindrical L over 2K LN R2 over R1, right? And then I multiply it by uh, um, its... Um, volume and then I multiply the volume of the cylindrical capacitor and then I uh, ex express the electric field of the capacitor what do you think is going to happen when I come to finally to the end what's going to be the, uh, the energy density for a cylindrical it's going to be the same half E0 half E0 electric field squared So that's something you can do later on and prove to yourself that the energy density always comes out to be half E0 E squared, no matter what kind of capacitor it is. So it's, in the, it's independent of the type of capacitor. So this turns out to be a general equation, which I could put here on this table. Now, using this uh, equation, I can...